today. We're going to go through all Final Cut Pro settings, briefly go over what each setting does and what defaults I recommend changing. There's two ways to bring up Final Cut Pro settings window. You can go up to the menu bar, click on Final Cut Pro and select settings, or use a keyboard shortcut command comma. Let's start in the general tab. The first setting you can adjust is time display, and this is fairly straightforward. This decides the time displayed under the viewer window. Your options here are time code display, time code display with subframe, duration in frames, or duration in seconds. Under this, we have a button to reset all dialog warnings. These are the pop-ups you get every once in a while with a do not remind me option again. Clicking this button will bring them all back. Next, we have a button to validate all audio units on next launch. If you're having issues with third-party audio plugins, clicking this button will force Final Cut Pro to validate all installed third-party audio units next time you launch it. Final Cut Pro will perform a series of tests to verify that each audio unit or plugin is operating correctly and notify you if any fail. If you're having issues with audio in Final Cut Pro, this is a great way to test whether third-party plugins are causing your issues. Inspector units lets you select what values are displayed in the inspector for the transform, crop, and distort tools. Your options are pixels or percentages. I find percentages to be very inconsistent here, so I recommend sticking to pixels. For example, when using a crop tool with percentages, if you crop off 50% of the right side, only a quarter of your frame gets cropped off. But if you crop off 50% of the top, half of your frame is cropped. If you know your project resolution and have either basic math skills or a calculator, stick to pixels. Under this, we have the first setting where I recommend changing a default color correction. This is a default set of tools you get when you go to the color inspector. By default, this is set to color board, but let's face it, no one likes using color board. Studies show that over 90% of Final Cut Pro users prefer color wheels. Changing the default to color wheels will save you two clicks each time you go to the color inspector. You can also set this to color curves, hue saturation curves, or color adjustments, which is actually a good alternative to color wheels, especially for beginners. And last, in the general tab, is automatic color conform for HDR clips. With this set to automatic, if you add a clip to a project that has a different color space, like adding an HDR clip to an SDR project, the clip's color space will automatically be converted to the same color space as the project. Let's move on to the editing tab. First up here is a couple timeline settings. The show detail trimming feedback decides what you see in the viewer window when editing your clips. With this option deselected, when you change your edit point in your timeline, you see only the clip you're editing. Selecting this checkbox shows you a two-up display in the viewer for more accurate feedback on the edit point. For example, on a roll edit, this display shows the end point of the left clip and the start point of the right clip, giving you much more precision on deciding where to place your cut. Position playhead after edit operation is another setting I strongly recommend changing. By default, this is turned on, so if you have your playhead at a specific place in your timeline, and you have a title, for example, your playhead is moved to the end of the title clip. If you want to preview what the clip you added looks like, you have to scroll back in your timeline. Turn this off. Now your playhead doesn't move, so you can make your edit and preview what it looks like without your hands ever leaving the keyboard. Under this, we have show reference waveforms. With this turned off, when you turn down the volume of your clips, the actual audio waveform changes shape. With this option turned on, you get a reference waveform in the background that lets you see the sound more clearly, so you can continue to see audio waveforms in full for easy reference when editing, even with the volume turned down. This setting is off by default, but I strongly suggest turning this one on. Next, we have four settings for default durations. First one is for audio fades. This is when you apply fades to the start and end of your clip. Next one is the default duration for audio crossfades between two clips. Still image setting is to set the default duration in seconds for still images and freeze frame clips. And the transitions value is to set the default duration for video transitions. The playback tab has a number of settings that affect the playback and rendering performance in Final Cut Pro. First up is background render. Anytime you modify a clip in your timeline, Final Cut Pro creates a render file for better playback performance. The problem is, these render files can make your Final Cut Pro libraries huge. Most of the time, especially if you have a Mac with Apple Silicon, you don't need to render everything, so turn this off. When you do run into playback issues and you see a dotted line above your clip, meaning this needs to be rendered, you can just select the clip 
and manually rendered with Control R, rendering only the clips you need can save you a ton of space on your hard drive. If you are on an older machine and do need to render most clips, I recommend changing the start after time. This is the amount of idle time before Final Cut Pro starts rendering. By default, this is set to 0.3 seconds, meaning anytime you pause editing for less than half a second, Final Cut Pro starts rendering clips in the background. Then, as soon as you start editing again, the rendering pauses. This constant stopping and starting can make Final Cut Pro response lower, which at times can be a bit frustrating. I would recommend changing this to at least 5 seconds, so when you do take a break, all the necessary clips will get rendered without the unnecessary starting and stopping. The render share GPU setting decides which graphics processing unit Final Cut Pro uses when rendering or sharing. On most newer machines, this setting is grayed out. Under this, we have a number of playback options. Scrolling timeline setting scrolls your timeline during playback so that the timeline always shows a section of your project playing in the viewer. I always turn this on. Optimized media for multicam clips is a lot like background rendering. With this selected, Final Cut Pro automatically transcodes multicam clips to Apple ProRes 422. This provides better performance during playback, but the file sizes are huge. I recommend turning this off and only transcoding multicam clips when absolutely necessary. The next three settings are for when Final Cut Pro can't play back your clips in real time and drops frames. I turn all three of these off. Pre and post roll duration values set the amount of time before and after the skimmer position when using the play around command. For example, if you make an edit in your timeline and want to see what it looks like, pressing shift forward slash will play back a section of your timeline from 2 seconds before the playhead to 2 seconds after. These times can be adjusted with the pre and post duration sliders. Player background is just what it sounds like. The setting lets you choose a background for the viewer. Your options are black, white, or checkerboard. This is only for editing and does not affect your exported clips. Any transparency will always show up black during exports unless your export codec has an alpha channel. The AV output pop-up menu is for when you have an external audio or video device or a monitor connected to your Mac. This pop-up menu lets you send the video and audio from your Mac to an external monitor. This feature shows you how your video and audio look and sound on a reference SDR or an HDR monitor. The Show HDR as Tone Mapped option reduces the dynamic range of your video to match the display you have connected. Next, let's take a look at the import options. Whatever settings you set up in this window will be set as defaults. So when you import video by clicking the import button, these are the settings that will be selected by default. Also, any media you drag into Final Cut Pro will have these settings applied to it. First is the option to copy files to library or leave files in place. The copy to library storage location option makes a copy of your media and stores it inside the Final Cut Pro library. This does take up more space on your drive, but since everything is contained inside the Final Cut Pro library, you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting or moving your media. If you import your media and leave files in place, Final Cut Pro makes symbolic links, also known as sim links, which are special files that point to the media files without copying them. Since your media is never copied into the Final Cut Pro library, your library size will remain minimal. But if you move, rename, or delete the original files, the link is broken, and you end up with missing media in your project. For majority of people, the best option here is to copy files to library and delete the original files after import. This way, everything you need is inside the Final Cut Pro library itself, and you don't have to worry about any missing media. Next is keyboard options. If you have your media organized in folders or with tags, these folders or tags will be converted into keyword collections in Final Cut Pro. This is one of my favorite ways to organize my media. When you import your media into Final Cut Pro, you're also given the option to analyze video for balance color. Selecting this option will analyze colors in your entire clip during import. When you add a clip to your timeline and select the balance color option in an analyzed clip, Final Cut Pro will choose a frame within the part of the clip in your timeline that is closest to being correctly balanced and adjust your colors based on that frame. If you don't analyze your clip, Final Cut Pro will balance color based on the frame your playhead's on. Generally, if you use automatic color balance correction in Final Cut Pro, you will get better results on analyzed clips. You can also analyze clips in Final Cut Pro for a number of people and shot types. After analyzing the clip, Final Cut Pro will add appropriate keywords to the entire clips or clip ranges. One person, two people or group, close up, medium shot or wide shot. 
Select and create smart collections will group the similar clip types into smart collections, making the clips easier to find. This can be really handy on large projects like documentaries. Under this, you have a few options to transcode your media. To keep file sizes manageable, most modern cameras record in compressed formats. This allows recording high quality video to memory cards with limited storage. These compressed formats are fine for playback, but can be hard to edit, especially on older machines. Transcoding these files to optimize their proxy media can significantly increase performance during editing. Create Optimized Media transcodes your video clips to an Apple ProRes 422 codec. This retains your video's original quality, including video resolution and frame rate, but file sizes can get huge. Optimized Media is much easier to edit, but it will not improve your original video quality. Proxy media files are quite a bit smaller, but you do lose quality when editing. You can choose to transcode your media to either Alpha ProRes 422 proxy codec or H.264 and either retain the original frame size, drop it down to a percentage, or set it to max out at a specific resolution. But this is just during the editing stage. When you export your video, you can switch back to original media and not lose any video quality. Under this, we have three audio analysis options. Fix Audio Problems analyzes your audio and automatically fixes common problems like hum, noise, and loudness. Separate Mono and Group Stereo analyzes your audio channels and groups them into Dual Mono or Stereo depending on the result of the analysis. Remove Silent Channels does exactly what it says. It removes any silent audio channels. Any audio imported into Final Cut Pro has one of the three default audio roles automatically assigned to it. Dialogue, Music, or Effects. You can override this feature and manually specify which audio role is assigned to your clips. If your audio has IXML tags assigned to it, selecting this checkbox will bring these into Final Cut Pro and assign custom sub roles to your clips based on these tags. And last but not least is the Destinations tab. This is where you can add, remove, and modify your export presets. Use the plus or minus buttons at the bottom of the Destinations sidebar to add or remove share presets. To modify an existing share preset, select it in the sidebar and change the preset settings on the right. To change a preset back to its default settings, right click on the preset in the sidebar and click revert to original settings. You can also set up an export bundle and add two or more destinations to it to export a few different versions of your project in a single step. I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful and you learned at least one or two things you didn't know. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.